Hey there, everybody. We are getting started with Dalton's Atomic Theory. Here's my abbreviated version on the board if you want to pause and write it down. You can also write down and record Dalton's actual wording in his complete sentences on page 83 of your textbook. Let's talk about it. All right, John Dalton, brilliant chemist, came up with this theory. It's a theory, we can't actually prove it because atoms are too small, which I wrote right here. Chemists accept the idea that atoms exist, though they are too small to be proven. But let's back up and take a look at his theory. Number one, all matter is made of indivisible particles called atoms. So way back in ancient Greece, when Democritus said, yeah, I don't think that continuous theory of matter is quite correct, I'm going to propose the discontinuous theory of matter. He was right. Matter is made up of teeny tiny little particles. It's not just one long chain of slime like we looked at. And we call those indivisible particles now atoms. Number two, atoms of the same element have the same properties, or they are the same. So if you have an atom of carbon and you compare it to an atom of carbon again, they're going to be exactly the same. Number three, atoms of different elements are then different. They have different properties. Okay, so if you have an atom of carbon and you compare it to an atom of nitrogen, they are going to be different and have different properties. They are going to act differently in different situations. Fourth, compounds are formed when atoms join in simple whole number ratios. Okay, so when atoms join together, Remember, they can't be split into like a half or a third of an atom when they're joining together. So they are joining together in simple whole number ratios, say two atoms of this to three atoms of that, and that's what we call a compound. Okay, John Dalton did an amazing job proposing this theory. We accept it today with two small little differences. Number one, atoms actually are not completely indivisible. Now for you and I, we cannot split atoms apart. But those scientists who came up with the atomic bomb, that's exactly what they did. They figured out how to use uh, nuclear fusion to split atoms, give off tons of energy, and create these huge, scary bombs. And the second one here, atoms of the same element are exactly the same. They don't have exactly the same properties. Sometimes you might have two different atoms of uh, say boron um, and they have teeny tiny little differences those two atoms would be called isotopes of one another and the difference lies in the nucleus in the center of the atoms we're going to talk about what isotopes are more in a future module but for the most part John Dalton got it right so this is Dalton's atomic theory that you need to know and after you get that down we're going to talk about molecules. Okay, what's a molecule? Molecules are groups of atoms joined together. Molecules, groups of atoms joined together. to form, remember what they're called? Compounds. All right, so remember, elements, elements are composed of identical atoms. Elements are composed of identical atoms. So if you have the element uh, sodium, it is made up of all little individual sodium atoms. Elements made up of atoms, okay? Compounds, are composed of identical <clears throat> molecules. So 
So if you have the compound of sodium chloride, which is table salt, it is composed of individual, not atoms this time, but little groups of atoms that look exactly the same to one another, and those little groups of atoms are called molecules. So molecules make up compounds, atoms make up elements. Got that? Uh, I have a little example for you right here. If you can see in my hand, okay, these are all little yellow uh, tissue paper balls. And they are going to show us an example of, let's pretend this is the element carbon. So if we could zoom in on carbon, carbon would be made up of all the same type of atom. Here's another example of an element. Let's say this one is nitrogen. All right, so here we have four little nitrogen atoms. Together, the group of them would be the element nitrogen. Compare that to these right here. As you can see, they are not just one color, but two colors, green and blue. So this is representing two atoms joined together. Let's pretend this is that compound that we were talking about, table salt. So this is um, a compound, sodium chloride, made up of individual sodium chloride molecules, atoms that are joined together. And the molecules all look the same, one sodium, one chloride, okay? So compounds are made of molecules, elements are made of atoms. If I was to put together my atoms of carbon and nitrogen, remember my yellow and red, are they joined together now? I'm shaking them up, let's say I have a container full of these atoms, I'm shaking them up, but they're not joined together. Is this a compound? No, it's not. It's just two elements hanging out together in the container. So it's not a compound unless the atoms are joined together. I'm gonna draw a picture for you to add to your notes. Here's an element comprised of individual <clears throat> atoms, okay? Compare that to a compound comprised of molecules. All the molecules look the same. They have one large red circle and two little purple ones. So compounds are comprised of identical molecules. Molecule are atoms that are joined together in groups. All right, got that down? Moving on. Now we're gonna talk about classifying and abbreviating compounds. Erase this here for you. Once you get these terms down, and maybe you've already had them in previous science courses, but we will be using them a lot, so make sure that you understand and can use them in the correct way, okay? Element versus compound, molecule versus element, molecule versus atom. Make sure you know the difference between them. All right, abbreviating and classifying compounds. Abbreviating and classifying compounds. My board is still a little bit wet. Okay, this is a section in your book. And the notes I want you to have from this are, I'm going to start with the term chemical symbol, which I believe we have talked about one other time. Okay, the chemi a chemical symbol is the abbreviation of remember to try to write large for you. A chemical symbol is the abbreviation <clears throat> of an atom. Okay? For example, B is the chemical symbol of boron. Okay? It names the atom, a boron atom. If you have a group of boron atoms, then you have the element boron. Chemical formula A 
chemical formula is the abbreviation for a molecule. Chemical formula is the abbreviation for a molecule. Telling which atoms and how many. Okay, which atoms and how many. For example, H2O. We are all familiar with. This tells us that there are two hydrogen atoms. The subscript right here, which follows the H, tells us that there are two hydrogen atoms. Okay, and the H is just the chemical symbol for hydrogen, which is one of the first 20 elements on the beloved periodic table. So you need to have that one memorized. So this tells us there are two hydrogen atoms, and then this O right here is the chemical symbol for Oxygen, another one that you need to know. Thankfully, those two are easy. So this, uh, without a subscript after it, you can see the absence of a subscript there. You can understand that to mean one. But chemists, you know, they, they must be really busy people because they don't like to take the time to write ones down. So when there's not a subscript, you have to understand that to mean one, okay? So there's one oxygen atom. And that is a chemical formula. Another example down here. Example, what if we had one calcium, we're gonna go the other way now, one calcium and two chlorine atoms joined together to make a molecule. What would the chemical formula be for one calcium and two chlorine? Well, I know that the chemical symbol for calcium is capital C-A. There's only one, so I don't put a subscript. And the chemical symbol for chlorine is capital C-L, and there are two of them, so I put a little two subscript after C-L. So C-A-C-L-2 <clears throat> is the chemical formula for calcium chloride. Another example, how about we have two hydrogen, and two oxygen. Okay, the chemical symbol for hydrogen is H. We said there's two of them, so we put a two subscript. The chemical symbol for oxygen is O. There are also two oxygens this time, so we put a subscript of two down here. So that chemical formula is H2O2. Now, in your mathematical brains, you might think, oh, I really want to reduce that because it seems like a ratio, it seems like a fraction. No reducing, okay? These show actual amounts of atoms in the molecule. So we don't want to know the ratio of how many hydrogens there are to how many oxygens in a chemical formula. We want to know exactly how many atoms of each there are. And by the chemical formula, you can see that you know that in one molecule of this H2O2, there are two atoms of hydrogen and two atoms of oxygen. And that's how we begin to classify and abbreviate compounds.